Hey everyone, so you got Joan Isaiah here from the Automator, and this script was actually um, we converted it to V2. It was something I think Scan wrote years ago, FileX Pro. And what was amazing was there was like something like fifteen hundred different file properties that a given file might have. And the really what I didn't love about V1, the version he created, which I'm not knocking what he did because it's a complicated thing, is that he's like, yeah, go go see what's available, and then maybe you can see if it has that property. And it was just really confusing. So um, I had the guys work on this to make it easier, where now we give it a file, and it will tell you what properties are available out of that list of the 1500. It'll only show you the ones it has. Now, you might have a file that, let's say it's a JPEG picture, but it doesn't have a certain one. If it does that file doesn't have that, it's not going to show up in this list. But So just keep that in mind. Just because you dropped in one file, it doesn't mean that's always going to be the same for every file you have of that file type. But as I just want you to go ahead and show how the tool works. All right. So Irfan went ahead and created this little GUI and it he created the library, well, converted the library. So in the GUI here, you can select any type of file. So no matter what you select, uh, let's start with an image. So let's start with an icon here. So I open this up. It reads all the properties that have a value. So if the property does not have value, it's not going to be listed here, which is what Joe was hinting at. And there's a lot of those properties that are kind of like um, common to all the files. Like for example, the path, most of them have that. The owner, I guess every single file has an owner, right? Because it has to be the, the person who created the file and so on like that. Like they all have to have a name, right? right. <laughs> you, don't have a, you don't have a file without a name, like you, you will have an issue. But what happens is, for example, this here, the rating, this icon, um, it says unrated, but there are some files that have that, that allow you to have rating, but if the rating is empty, it will not be listed, that's all. But in any case, it's not only showing you the properties that are available for the file, which usually contains very cool information. And um, hopefully at some point we will be able to kind of like organize this in sections, which is what for, uh, uh, Windows does. When you do this in Windows, it groups them like the dimensions and the height and the width. They all kind of like are grouped in a thing, but that's not easy to do really. <laughs> Right, so the next thing that we can do is not only just look at the properties, we can actually double click on a property and it will copy it to the clipboard. But what it's copying is not only the value, it's not the 128 pixels, whatever. What it's copying actually is the code that you could use. So let's say that I have a script and in that script, I just include that particular library, which is the one that um, Irfan converted to V2. And now I can use this code. This is the function call for that. So the function call really goes in two, in two different steps. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. Is that you have to give it the file name that you're looking for that particular property, and then the property name that you want. And this is the part that Joe was saying. Like It was a little bit tricky because you would have to know what the name of that property is. And some of them are very straightforward, like height. Okay, you get the height. But there are some of them that it depends. There are some of them that are not as straightforward, and probably I will not find one of those uh, weird ones right now just from the sun. But there are some of them that use the system uh, dot whatever, and it is not that simple to get sometimes. But in any case, we grab all of those guys, and I could actually just put them in my code. And why would I want to do that? Well, in certain situations, you might want to create certain types of, of scripts that look at the height and the width. Let's say, let's say I have the width somewhere here. And I could probably look through all my images in a folder. And if the width or height are in a specific range, I would want to work with them or if they're bigger than a certain width and height, I don't want to work with them. Stuff like that. Well, so you can do it easily by using this right. particular function to get the information that Windows has stored for them. So the point being, on lines three and four, where he has the path to that one icon, you wouldn't have the path to get that one icon. You're going to swap that path out with the picture that you're looking at, right? And so it will go return the height or width for the path you know, of what you, the file you pointed to. Right, so this could be any file. So actually, 
In this particular instance, we did it with an icon, but if I had a, a different type of file, like a picture, right? So I would just need the path to that, copy as path. And if I pass that in here, right? I would then have the information about that other file. Right? Yeah, so and then throw a message box. Put the, the, the loop file in there. Throw, throw a message box. Let's let's see if we can actually get it yeah, to work right. <laughs> yeah, right. So message box here. Well, let's just do one message box yeah. uh, with an uh, X and height, right? And there we go. Oh, well, well, not sure. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, because the, the it's that has it in it, right? Forward, right. So yeah, that's right. interesting. I didn't yeah. know that, but we can remove that from there. But but interestingly enough, let me just do it like that, and let's put W. And here we have height, and basically now we have the width and height and pixels, right? So very interesting stuff, and that was for the bike. But if I go back to the other. Uh, thing that we have, which is, let me copy this up and have the path to that icon right here. I don't have to change anything, just the path. And again, if I'm looping through files, I will just use the A loop file full path. And now look at that. This one is a 128. Right. By 128. So often if you're building a tool where you want to say, oh, I'm going to put it, I'm going to insert an image. Hey, that image, you might want to require it to be in a certain height or width. And, and this is just a bad example because I think height and width are probably not hard to get in a different way, right? But there are there are over a thousand file attributes, and that's what's really cool, right? Is sometimes you're looking for something very like once you pick. I think we have a couple other examples of like uh, the database one, right? Yeah, that's a very weird thing. What can I know about it? Oh, look at that! Whether it's linked or not, what type of database it is? That's interesting, actually. Um, I didn't know that you could tell that by the DB extension. Like the DB extension doesn't tell you what it is. Right. Well, it, it looks like it is a SQLite database and some other things. It seems to be that it didn't have a lot. Look of at data. the look at the free space and and the percent fit, like space used. So that's also is that a part of vacuuming? Is I but maybe I'm thinking I'm thinking that is about my hard drive. Oh, okay. My okay. Hard drive is uh, 631 gigabytes. And I, uh, I only have, so this is general information about the system, looks like. Now, this right here is the file size. So, yeah, not a big file in this particular drive. So I didn't get much data about a DB file. But again, it depends on the type of file that you're selecting. There's certain types of, um, this one is on our hotkey script. And I think this information is being taken by the registry. The registry actually, however you the how you, however you linked the file, I selected the DB files. They were not linked to anything. I right clicked on it and said open with, and I set the the SQLite database for that. And probably that's the reason why it's calling that because I recognize that the file extension AHK is actually linked in the registry to on our hotkey script. I've seen that, so probably it's taking some of the information. Um, in such a way that you could find that in the registry, but there are certain things that you probably will not be able to find in the registry. Like yeah, I know. Rating, that is something that you will not find in the registry for a given file. That's something that is saved in that particular file, right? So very interesting whether it has been shared or not, which is yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I know also like contacts. There, there, were, there were, when you look at the 1,500 or 1,300 hours from anywhere um, items, uh, properties. It, it's right. quite apparent. There's a lot of things that could be very helpful in understanding the files that you're trying to process. And and as Ace and I, we talk a lot about building tests for your scripts to make sure it doesn't break, right? This is one of those things you might build in there to say, is it really what we think it is? Right. That is, that is a, good, uh, uh, a good, something good to point out. Like, Whenever we're doing stuff with multiple files, multiple scripts and stuff, it might be a good idea to double check what you're doing. And here you have additional information. Yeah, you can get a, an MP4 file. That doesn't mean that it's something that you can open with Windows Media Player because of the codec. Maybe the codec is incorrect. Well, 
you might not have exactly what coding you have here, but you have what type of video compression is using. You know, so a lot of very interesting stuff that you might want to um, look at. And again, not only look, look at it, but also use it in your programs because now you programmatically can get that same information right here. You know? And I saw on that one, I saw the frames per second, um, which is... Uh, Sometimes you want to you look at that to see give an idea of the quality, very right? Very cool, right? Yeah. Very interesting. And the length, which um, also I know is not always easiest to get. So the length of the media, if it's an audio or video file, I think you can get that. But yeah, it's a very cool little tool. And again, this is more of a syntax. One is it helps you understand what's available, but just keep in mind, like let's say if you had a a jpeg file in here jpegs can sometimes have geolocation stuff and that one picture you put into it may not have had the the location stuff but a different one might so unfortunately you know it's it's unfortunate but we just don't know every type of attribute that's available for each extension so we don't know how to build something like that at least it's not be easy maybe Maybe AI can tell us. Yeah. <laughs> AI will do that for us soon, right? <laughs> yeah. That'll be interesting. So I'll put the URL for this up on the screen. Um, I think this one will be like the normal dollar, or you can, you know, pay, what is it, twenty four ninety nine and get all of our, have access to all of our um, low-cost scripts. All right. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, chime in and with any questions you have any. Appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye.